we're good now. Okay. Um, so, hi. Uh, this is building a fandom to create a loyal fan base. Uh, what are you going to learn today? How to build a fandom, shocker. Um, <laughs> How to market yourself as much as your books. That is huge in the creative fandom. How to manage your fans and reader expectations. And how to achieve a winning mindset that generates success. And yes, I mean, that sounds like yes, but it is not, I assure you. Um, I'm a firm believer that mindset is everything. I'm constantly manifesting things in my mind, setting goals for myself, willing things into existence. Uh, for example, I was going to come to this presentation and say, I have made it two years in publishing with astounding success and have never once received the KDP bonus. <laughs> Ten wow. minutes later, KDP bonus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They are hard to get. I don't know how you get them, but I finally got one, so I'm pumped. <laughs> um, all right, so some of you may be wondering, like, who is this lady with big ass glasses? And is she qualified to even talk about this topic? Well, I'll let you guys decide if the 45 minutes of your time is worth it, and I might be able to convert you into a fan. So this is me. Um, some of you are familiar with my author journey as I've been very vocal about it in the 20 books Facebook group since I started. I began writing when I was laid off uh, from my hospital job at the beginning of 2020. Was in lockdown with uh, my three children who are now eight, five, and three. It's hell. <laughs> <laughs> I needed an outlet and um, so I said, hey, if I'm ever going to write a book, now would be a great time to do that. Um, so, my debut series I published October 1st, 2020. It's gained a huge following of super fans, and my life's been changed forever, thanks to self publishing. I'm not doing author work, I'm being a mom, which is awesome and tiring and everything all the time. So, first, I have to give you a little rundown here of this is like a timeline of my journey. Uh, October 2020, published the first book of Emily Lakes. I made twenty five hundred dollars my first month. I was so excited because I didn't expect to make a dime. And this was more than half of what I was making at my day job. My home was in foreclosure. I was driving a 96 Camry that was silver and gold. So a year later, I published book five of Emerald Lakes, A Year to the Day. And that book hit 34 in the Kindle store, and I made $42,000 that month for KDP. Um, two months later, the final Emerald Lakes book was available on audio. And at that point, um, I had accrued $38,000 from Audible. Um, this past spring, in April, I released the first book in a spin-off series. I had, you know, almost 1,200 pre-orders. It was a big success. Um, and I kind of like went a little darker with this series, so I did that strategically. Like, you know, let me bring in a little bit more of the dark romance readers. They liked that book. They read my backlist. You know, you see the growth here. Um, this June, I published alternate <coughs> covers of Emerald Lakes that are only available from my website. Um, the day that those dropped on my website, I made eighteen thousand dollars. <laughs> um, that month was the first month I reached Dolphin, the terms in uh, the Twenty Books group, um, and I made fifty-five thousand dollars. So now I'm here with you guys wondering what the hell happened over the last two years. <laughs> so, goals. My first year in indie publishing, I made 225000 Last year I said my goal was to double that. 
in 2022, and I wasn't sure I would succeed because I went through a burnout phase um, after that first year of pushing myself and wanting to maintain the momentum that I built and, you know, getting my family out of poverty. Like, I didn't want to go back to that. I pushed and pushed and pushed. Gave the price. Only published one book this year. So did I do it? Um, yeah, I, I, did, I didn't think it was going to happen, but yeah. Um, so super fans, where are they? How do I get them? Um, number one thing I think is characters. You know, you want your readers to connect to your characters. You need them to be relatable, memorable. Um, put parts of yourself into these characters because by doing that, you're immediately forming a connection with your readers that they like. If they like your characters, they're going to like you. Um, pay attention. You know, take ideas from other mainstream fandoms. Look at Game of Thrones. Look at Vampire Diaries. Look at Lord of the Rings. Um, look at their tropes and deliver those expectations. And you know, the number one reason why readers read. It's an escape from reality. Give them that escape through storytelling. But remember to keep your content relatable and the struggles real. Everybody struggles. You don't know what anyone's going through. So address that. Give them something to identify with. They'll value your story more. So ways to engage. Uh, my number one engagement tool is my Facebook reader group. Um, fans love having a place where they can do what they do best and talk about your stories. Before I became a writer, my number one pet peeve was I just finished this book, I'm sitting here about how it just happened. I need to talk to somebody right now about this. And then I couldn't find a place to do that. Give your readers that place to congregate and talk about the ways that you just like destroy their lives. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> the second, uh, Instagram, try to post regularly, build a street team. Who here doesn't know what a street team is? Okay, street team is a group of your readers who have some sort of presence on social media. This is huge because by having a team of 25, 30, 40 people, you're making them feel included in your fandom, which they love, and they are sharing your content and reaching audiences that you never could have reached on your own. So, number three, TikTok. Um, I said this last year during my TikTok presentation, but if you're not utilizing TikTok, you're losing sales. Um, it's not about number of views, it's about the number of people who reach your video that actually buy your book. What's the point in having a one million view video if only 10 people buy the book? You'd rather have a 500 view video and 300 people buying the book. Book talk is huge. Um, by, by planting your seeds into TikTok and letting these book talkers like see your story, you're giving them new content to create. Uh, the fourth is Patreon. I did start a Patreon this year. Um, it's made me about $13,000. Um, it's a great way to give readers more of that exclusive like connection to you that they crave. I have, uh, when I created it, I was like, okay, my top level tier, I'm gonna make it $50. Nobody's gonna make That's wrong. <laughs> um, by being in the top level tier, they get to read the book as I'm writing it. It is a complete rough draft. It's very clear from the beginning. This is not edited. Some parts won't make sense. When you read the, last, the, the final product, there might be stuff that's different or change, but they love it because they don't want to wait you know, for the next book to come. They want to be in it now. So what else can I do to satisfy these people once I have them? Um, you can do giveaways. This does not always have to be a physical prize or a monetary value. This can be 
you know, making them a character in your book, killing them off in your book. People really appreciate that. I don't know. <laughs> um, do lives, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, you know, it doesn't matter if you don't have anything important to share with them. They will ask you questions and all you have to do is answer them. Um, book signings. I've done a ton of book signings this year. Did not make a lot of money from that. That's not why I do it. I do this because meeting a reader face to face that you know their life changed from your story is priceless. This is what they want. This is what means the most to them. So, you know, book signings are a great tool for that. Um, playlists. When I'm writing, I always just create a Spotify playlist. I listen to music as I write. Anytime I hear a song that makes me think of that series, I add it to this. This is something I do already. It's not extra work for me. Sharing it with them gives you know that extra connection. Like, oh, where it listens to Ice Nine Hills, that's weird. Um, you know, like they just they just want that extra connection. Um, exclusive newsletter content. Last year, I did a round of character interviews um, before the last book in the series came out. This was huge for my newsletter. And this is what happened. I'm going to go about FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, but I would post in the group, this is the character we're interviewing this week. And in the comments, people would ask questions. I would copy and paste those questions into my newsletter and answer them in character. They loved it. As soon as the newsletter went out, they'd run to the Facebook group. Oh my god, can you believe Ferris said that? Like, you know, and then other people are like, I want to get it, how do I get it? And you go here and you sign up, and that's how you get it. Um, so that, you know, that's something that they just love because it's bonus content, it's fun. Um, the last thing, you know, give them a job. Street team, beta reader, alpha reader, moderator for your Facebook group. Um, one of my super fans became my PA, and she's great. And you know, you want you want people around you who believe in you, and the story's great. All right, most important thing to get ready. <laughs> what does every fandom require? Fans. Fans. Okay, yes, but. Give them shit to buy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the fans out there. Look at Harry Potter. I mean, there's people everywhere, every day, wearing this merchandise. Um, list of ideas of things you can do. I mean, the possibilities are endless. If you can stamp a logo or a saying or something on it, you can sell that. Um, so that's something I did this year is I opened an online store with my website and um, formed this relationship with a local woman who already had a business, like making t-shirts and epoxy tumblers and stuff like this. And she became a fan. And so it's just been a great relationship to build. Um, and I don't have to ship anything, which is good because I'm not good at that. <laughs> Um, the other thing, signed books. So um, this year I rebranded my Emerald Blake series with these because I didn't feel that the model I had on my original series was plus size enough. And you know we all make mistakes when we start out and you do what you can with the money you have. So when I had enough money, I bought exclusive photos, and I found a model who is very open about her struggles with binge eating and body positivity, and that's what I stand for, so that's what I wanted. Um, I also, you know, alternate covers, discrete covers, that's been a big thing, particularly with book talk, so that you can pull up the book and not get banned, <laughs> you know? Um, those were a huge success. Um, and then for my Demons in My Beds uh, series, I did an alternate cover for that as well. And the hardback edition is only available on my website. 
So here's me. Uh, so that's 900 pounds of books that was delivered via a semi to my house. Um, that was me uh, the morning before I left to come here with not even half of the orders. And you just always want to make sure that you're being clear and honest with your readers about shipping delays or any other issues that come up because life happens. Um, so here, this is my Facebook group. Uh, this just happened the other day. Um, I don't know how late it is, but I know I'm late for the party, but I just started Emerald Lakes. I just finished the second book. What just was just quickly oh, was just quickly wondering where is the link to the support group? <laughs> <laughs> Self-help booklet? <laughs> um, Brick voucher for therapy? <laughs> what the F just happened? And these are responses from people in my group who are like, this is a support group, welcome. <laughs> I read this series, it was being published, and it's like, oh, bless you. Like, you know? um, but, but this is the community that I've cultivated. This is, this is what I want. I want you know, readers uplifting readers. I want authors uplifting authors. That's what I stand for. So this is important. Um, Okay, so characters and why they're important. One of my favorite characters in Emerald Lakes is Bran. She's a hilarious old witch who is obsessed with men. <laughs> She's independent, stubborn. Um, Bran was inspired by my great aunt Hap, who loved, who I love, and I strive to be like her as I age. And I knew if I wrote her, other people would love her just as much as I do. So why am I telling you? Um, because a week ago I had uh, to say goodbye to her. <laughs> um, and without meaning to, I was able to immortalize her um, through my words. And thousands of people have been mourning her with me, which has just been so moving. Um, and I just saw this this morning that somebody somebody did that, and you know it's just it's amazing like what you can do with your stories and your words. Um, so never underestimate that, like the impact that you can have, um, not only in your family's lives but like with your readers also. Um, that's what I have, and um, I'm open to questions. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think you have to go to the microphone if you have questions. I was asking this and then I'll just ask you that. Um, TikTok, what did you say about covers? You can't show your actual cover? Well, if they have sex in that, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I, I thought it was a copyright thing with Amazon. Oh, yeah, they don't like me. I <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any tips for um, keeping your online gathering spots on like Facebook a really positive, warm place? Because inevitably there will be some waves. Yes. So in the two years since I created my Facebook group, I never once had a really good comment. Because when I wrote my book, I was real to who I am and what I stand for. When people come into my group, that's the vibe I expect them to give. Emerald Lakes is as much a fictional town as it is a vibe. And I wanted that to carry over. Um, I just won't tolerate it. I won't. Like, this is my safe space. And if you're in here, it's because you support me, you love my characters, and you're my friends. So, that's my <coughs> As far as the, the street team and things like that, like what sort of things do you do to kind of keep people going and interacting and you know maintaining that? Because I, I know that a lot of people have started them and interaction is great in you know the first month or whatever, and then it falls off pretty quickly and people just stop you know, being as involved. 
So I think a uh, good thing is to do with your street team is to just do like little competitions and games and stuff, like to keep it fun. Um, I did like, the giveaways I do are like Q&A features in my newsletters. So it's like interview with this bookstagrammer or this book talker. So how you win that spot is like, you know, the most shares or the most recommendations or, you know, things like that. And we keep track of it and then we do a Q&A. So like we're, we're both winning. Like I'm getting their socials out there also. So it's a good way to get back to. Well, Hi. Uh, how personal do you recommend getting with your fandom? Because I notice now and nowadays, even more and more, because of the whole influencer thing that's rampant on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube, a lot of people really like it when the people they're a fan of is tells them a lot of things about themselves. And I was one of the reasons I was hesitant about TikTok was that I would have to show my face and talk, and all of the big like, authors on there are very. Mm -hmm. outgoing and extroverted maybe so like how necessary is that and how much how often would I need to be push myself to put myself out there and talk to them directly and share stuff so I think that comes down to your personal comfort level um, if you're not if you're not comfortable doing something don't do it um, I, I'm pretty honest with my readers about like my life. Um, like I have kids, so like when I'm writing my newsletter, I write my newsletter like I'm talking to my friend. Um, you know, so I'll just be like, oh, you know, this week Parker told Kara that you know she can't do that because she hasn't even grown her meter yet. <laughs> you know, so it's just like those little glimpses of my life that make me um, feel more like a friend to them. Um, and as far as showing your face on TikTok, you don't need to do that. You can, there's so many different ways now that you can get your book out there without showing your face. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Hi, this, uh, this, this question is about your merch. Is it uh, sourced locally or do you have a place on the internet? And the other question is, what's your biggest seller? Okay, so uh, the merch, when I, when I first started, I did a print on demand through Printful. And I mean, I don't have any complaints about them. But when I started um, getting more serious about it, that's when I turned to a local business, a small business. Um, and that's been a lot better for me, I think. I'm, you know, I, I make more money than I would doing it through Printful. Um, and I'd say my biggest seller... Flip-flops. Well, <laughs> aside from the books, <laughs> would be um, probably t-shirts and tumblers, like cups. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hello. Hello. Um, I think there was a question already about speaking, but I guess like if you could go into more detail about like what does that engagement process look like from like the start to like how you get them involved um, and like what kind of do you talk over Facebook I guess or <laughs> yeah so um, I have a, a like a secret Facebook group that my street team is in that my personal assistant will post content in for them to copy and share on their socials. Um, we also have like a messenger chat that I'll just pop in every now and then, like when I'm able to or not feeling overwhelmed. Um, and I know that means a lot to them even if I'm just, you know, saying hi or something like that. Um, another great thing to do is like everybody on my street team gets ARCs, which is advanced reader copies of my books. Um, that alone is probably why most of them are there. <laughs> they just don't want to wait because my book hangers are through. Hi. I'm just curious if you have any advice for starting a Facebook reader group because I've tried a couple times. And I don't know if it's because my audience is a little bit more like around my age so we're not really on Facebook that much. Right. But I've heard that they're really successful and I just don't know like where to go. It's been really hard getting people on that platform. Okay, so link it everywhere. 
link it in the back of your book. You could even link it in the beginning of your book. Um, whenever somebody like has me on Instagram and says, you know, how, how much they love it or their review or their character edit or whatever it is, I say, thank you so much. Are you going to bring in your natural misfits yet? No, I'm not. I'm going now. And that's how you build it. Um, even on my Facebook ads, I will go in and individually like every comment that somebody leaves about how much they enjoy my story because that's showing gratitude because I am grateful. And I put in the comments, I'm joining this group. And so many people find me because I do that. So I think that's a big start. Because how do you keep them engaged in the group? Because if you get them in there, then. Yes. Yeah. So um, we do different things in my group. I do self love Sunday, where it's like you know everybody posts a selfie, and we lift each other up. I do um, what are you reading Wednesdays? Open promo Fridays for other authors to promo their work. Um, but as your group grows and the love of your books grow, it will become its own entity and it will sustain itself. The readers are what create the engagement. So, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So I have two questions. Um, one is, do you have a Facebook page as well as that Facebook group, not just your your regular Facebook? But yeah. Okay. And that ties into your group. Um, I mean, I can post in my group under the page, but I honestly don't use my page for a whole lot, except we have to have a page to run Facebook ads. <coughs> so every now and then I'll take my Facebook page link and I'll drop it in the Facebook group and I'll say, have you liked me on here yet? And then they go like me on there. So also everything I post to Instagram automatically posts to my Facebook page. Um, but as far as like being a valuable tool, for me it's not really. Okay, and then regarding TikTok, do you have two separate TikTok accounts, one personal and one that's for your books, or do you just put everything under your one? I put everything under Even personal stuff? Yeah. Okay. And the algorithm doesn't get all messed up or anything? Just yeah, I, I don't really think, I mean, I'm bad at that, but um, you know, I hear people say that, like, you know, don't like these things or don't, you know, so, Maybe sometimes it does, I, I couldn't say for sure. Hi. Hi. I was just wondering, did you start building your fan base before you started writing the books and doing that, or did you do it back when you made the I started immediately. Like, because I was a nobody, and I, I knew that people like are less likely to take a chance on an author they've never heard from. Um, because who wants to get their hard earned money to something that might be crap? Um, I started running a two dollar a day Facebook ad on my pre-order, um, and I've heard a lot of people say, "Don't do that." A lot of people told me not to do it, but with my first book, I had 154 pre-orders, I think. So I do think that it was helpful and that it, it paid off. Um, and then, you know, big in the romance community on Facebook is doing like takeover parties and other authors' Facebook groups. It just gets your, your name out there, gets you more exposure. So I did every takeover in every group I could find. Hi, Jennifer. Um, how did you gain your first fan? Like, did you sell them a book off of your garage and wrap it in paper and write a special note? Or how did you get that first fan and how did that grow? So I think um, first fans would have been authors who taught me what I know. You know, like when you're starting out you need you need a group of people that can kind of guide you and that believe in you. Um, so I think my first fans were other authors and in turn, you know, they also promoted me and my work. And it's, you know, you need to remember that this is a business. This is as, as fun as it is and as social as it is, this is a business and you need to treat it like a career not a social club. Um, it's easy to get lost in that. Um, just, you just have to stay focused. Um, and then for, for first fans, you know, it was just the people who had pre-ordered my book or, you know, oh, this book is about a plus-sized woman and I'm a plus-sized woman too, so I want to read that. And it's all thanks. Hi. So, like, 
how did you qualify your street team people? Like, how did they, were they people who, you know, contacted you because they'd read the book, or were they people that you had reached out to and, you know, done the research of finding those other authors and yeah. things like that? So some of them were. Mm -hmm. um, some of them had read the book, and then they're like, I need to be on your street team immediately. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but what I do is um, every so often I will open up applications for my street team, and I work with my PA. Um, she creates like an application form where individuals like fill out their information, what books of mine they've read, um, links to reviews that they've done, because that's important, um, and just like links to their social so that we can like vet them and see like, okay, this person isn't like, gonna be a problem. Like, you know what, as you grow, you, you just have to be careful with who you surround yourself with because, you know, you're building a brand and you want the people around you to, to match that. So, we do vet our people. So, my husband is the author, actually, and he hasn't published yet. Uh -huh. So, like, what do you suggest for the very first thing to do when you don't have followers and all that? Mm -hmm. Post everywhere. Every platform. Like, seriously, you, you can't do enough. Um, any chance you get to put yourself out there, like any shot you get, if you have a chance to talk to somebody or there's an author you admire, message them. Like, reach out to them. Um, most of us are more than willing to help because, like, in my instance, like, I know where I came from and I will never forget it. So, thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good, are you? I'm good. Um, I have a two part question. Is that, um, I have two distinct, I work in, I write nonfiction. And I, I didn't have, I have a family yet. And um, one is leadership and one is non, um, non is non dominational Christian devotionals. The, like a journal. Like, should I have two separate Facebook pages for each thing? Because they're kind of different, even though they're both nonfiction, they're still kind of different categories. Um, and uh, that's my question. Okay, I think I would. Just since they're completely different topics, um, you know, you might get your leadership people that aren't in your Christian journal thing. You know what I mean? Like, right. You just, it goes into that, like, expectations. Right. What can I expect from this author? Whether it's the book or the interaction or whatever it is, you want to always be very clear on what the reader can expect. Yeah, so like, on, like even if I had TikTok, you'd expect having two different TikTok profiles. Okay, that was all. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm kind of gobsmacked about 150 pre-orders before you had ever even published anything. <laughs> so, um, what what do you think caused that? Did you have excerpts available of your book? Did you have a brilliant blurb on Amazon? How do you how do you think that happened? Um. Like I said, uh, the Facebook ad at $2 a day, I think that that really helped gain exposure. Um, I also think that, you know, posting teasers of the book on Instagram or, you know, in Facebook groups, giving people a little bit makes them want a lot more, you know, <laughs> so then they're more willing to follow you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Don't be shy. Okay. Well, I, um, my email is always open. You can always message me um, anytime. I love helping new authors. I sponsored people. I paid for editing for new authors. Like, I'm a firm believer in giving back. Um, I'm just being grateful and thankful for everything that I've achieved because I did not do it myself. You need that network of support and community. And I think 20 books is the place you get it. So you all, you're taking a good step in your career just by being here this week. So thanks for coming.